Hey everyone, this is Smarty from Everything Star Wars, and today's video topic is Star Wars Battlefront 2, what it could have been. EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Not many games in history have been as controversial as this one has. Upon release, thousands and thousands of fans were upset of the pay-to-win scheme and the loot box setup that the game had ingrained in its multiplayer. The system favored those who grinded hours and hours, which many people simply didn't have the time to do, or forked out the cash to get the loot boxes that had the star cards that they needed to be competitive in online gaming. Nowadays, the game seems to have been more put together. DICE has reworked the way that the multiplayer progression works, and has put it so that your work is rewarded with more credits, and that your abilities are unlocked by your playing, not by randomized loot crates. All the heroes are also unlocked for all players from when they first get the game, which I can say I very much appreciate that I don't have to work 70 something hours just to be able to play as Darth Vader, who is one of the staple Star Wars characters that everybody wants to play as. Lots of people were also upset with the single player campaign, and I'll get to that later, but I personally enjoy the single player campaign and its place in the Star Wars canon. Now to get to the good. Star Wars Battlefront 2 could have been a much better game if it hadn't been for this initial scandal. The graphics are absolutely beautiful. I have never seen the Star Wars universe look this good in any game, ever. And that's saying something, because I have played plenty of games. The gameplay is also very fun. I only got the game a couple of months ago, and in that time I could say that that game has gotten many hours of playtime for me just because of how much fun it is. The star cards are fun. The scenarios are fun, the heroes are fun, just everything. I always find myself smiling when something crazy happens, like I shoot down a TIE fighter or I'm able to defend the objective from the attacking rebels. Even so, these graphics and gameplay don't change the fact that there are many server issues still plaguing the game and that there are rumors that the developers are abandoning the game. I live in Asia right now, so it is very hard for me to find a populated server even in peak hours between 8 and 10 p.m. on any day. I usually have to select America or Australia from the server list or the region list in the settings of the game in order to play on servers that have people in them. And even then, it might take a couple of tries to get a populated server. In my opinion, this would be really easy to fix with something as simple as a server browser. As I said before, there are rumors of the developers abandoning this game due to the amount of scandal that was at the beginning of the game's release and also the little amount of players that are playing currently uh, showed by my difficulty of finding servers in any region. I can only imagine that most of these developers are working on Battlefield 5, which I can personally say I am excited to play, but that doesn't really defend them when it comes to just abandoning a game with people that honestly want it to be good, like me. I really want this game to be great, and it could have been great. If it hadn't been for that loot box scandal at the very beginning of the game's release, this game could have been absolutely amazing. The gameplay and the graphics are where they need to be, just the player base isn't because people have totally lost their faith in DICE and in EA when it comes to execution of this game, they just, they just never bought it. As for me, when the game came out, I waited months and months to buy it because I just didn't trust giving my money to EA or DICE for that matter for something that I knew wasn't complete. And when I saw that they came out with the Han Solo season, which isn't much of a season to begin with, I kind of just got interested. And I started playing the game more after I had gotten it, and I was like, hey, this is really fun. You know, I love playing as the clones in a modern game and seeing how great they look in these graphics and uh, playing as the Separatists, playing on Feed and other Clone Wars era uh, locations, like Kamino. Oh my gosh, Kamino is such a beautiful map. But the fact that there's not very many people playing it and that the developers could not be adding any more heroes possibly or not any more maps or less seasons than they had promised upon the game's release is really disencouraging for me and upsetting because this game, in my opinion, could have been one of the best Star Wars games ever to have been released. Now, nothing in my opinion is ever going to top Knights of the Old Republic or Star Wars Battlefront 2, the 2005 game, but this game could have gotten close, at least. Now, the campaign, in my opinion, is a really good campaign. I'm about halfway through playing it, and I could say so far that its canon relevance is nothing to scoff at. It really covers what the Empire and the Rebellion were up to right after the Battle of Endor, and I've always found that, you know, kind of lacking in canon. And this campaign kind of fills those holes. And I find it like, just like I said about the prequels, it's important to the Star Wars story. So those people that really don't like it 
have to admit that it is important to know what happened in that timeline, no matter how badly it was executed. Now I can say that some of the campaign was sort of poorly paced. Now I'll go more into detail on this once I create a video on the campaign of this game and its relevance to the canon and its characters, themes, and story arcs and whatnot. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I can pretty much just say it is a good campaign not to scoff at and it is relevant to the Star Wars universe, just like I said in my prequels video. So in conclusion, this game could have been amazing if it wasn't for that beginning scandal. The gameplay and graphics are great, and they could have remained great if the developers aren't abandoning the game, and if that scandal hadn't driven away so many possible customers and players of the game. There are still server issues, there are still rumors about, you know, just not supporting the game anymore, and that just makes people that want to buy the game, or have wanted to, less likely to buy it. This game could have been great. But I honestly blame the loot box scandal for ruining it. That's no fault of any player. It's definitely EA's fault for pressuring DICE to release the game early and also build it around monetization, which takes advantage of people who want to be good at the game and be competitive to have to fork out more money and more hours than they're willing to or than is realistic. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if, you know, you like this game or if you hate it. If you enjoy the gameplay, or if you agree with me that there are several issues still plaguing it, or what you think about the developers abandoning it, or your initial opinion of the loot box scandal. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this, and leave a comment down below of anything that you think that would be interesting for me to cover in future videos. Thanks for stopping by Everything Star Wars. Have a good day.